again, the pick and roll. Oh! Welcome home, fave. One of the most beloved jazz men in recent history is back after a brief sabbatical in New Orleans. Derek Favors, the longtime jazz mainstay, who came to the franchise as a 19-year-old all the way back in 2011, is more than just a familiar face. He's an answer to several of the major issues that plagued this team last year and raises both the floor and ceiling for Utah. Let's look at just how he'll do so. The most important upgrade Favors brings? Interior defense. The following is no offense to the departing Tony Bradley, a great guy who works hard. And hey, at least he's getting real attention here, unlike Ed Davis, who just didn't work out whatsoever in Utah. Still, there's a huge gap between the interior defense that Bradley and Favors bring to the table. That starts with basic recognition. The big man is responsible for providing help to his perimeter defenders. And as you can see on this play, Bradley is well positioned to do so. Except, he doesn't. Compare that with Favors on a nearly identical play, with time to digest the offense and react. Bradley was even more lost on marginally complex plays. He's so focused on LeBron here that he completely misses the cutter to the basket from the weak side, not even getting a contest up on Kyle Kuzma. Compare that, once again, to Favors, who spots the action and is over to cut it off well in advance before anything bad can happen. This is just normal stuff for him. Bogdanovich, one-on-one, -on -one, goes left hand against Crowder. Blocked, favors, great defense. Here's Tony Bradley defending a Spencer Dinwiddie pick and roll. And now, here's Derek Favors defending a Spencer Dinwiddie pick and roll. Then there's the mobility issue. Bradley often struggles to contain ball handlers in space, as you can see here. Favors, though, does better. You can see him here corralling CJ McCollum, recovering from a tough dribble move, and cleaning up his mess at the rim. Bradley also does stuff like... this. Uh, what exactly is this, Tony? Oh no. Favors, meanwhile, seems to be able to glide in the air forever while blocking shots. Cumulatively, the numbers show a big gap between the Jazz's interior defense with Bradley versus Favors as the center on the floor. Even when Bradley's in the right spot, he really struggles to impose his size at the rim. That's Lonzo Ball finishing through him right there. Chris Paul made it look easy. It really shouldn't be this easy for smaller guys to wrong foot or get Bradley out of position near the rim, but it just tends to happen way too often. Kemper Walker back in the floor for Boston. Oh God. The overall gaps in team defense are startling between Bradley and Favors at center. Keen observers will note Favors' struggles here in New Orleans, and they're not wrong. Favors' numbers did drop as a rim protector and an interior defender. But really, are these plays his fault? Look fairly closely here. Can the guy get a little help, Pelicans? I think it's a different situation in Utah. Another point of excitement for Jazz fans? The reconnection of Favors and Joe Ingles. Ingles and Fave have an endless bag. Sometimes, Fave will pop for the J. Sometimes, he'll slip out of the pick against switching teams. Sometimes he'll roll hard and end up eating after Joe Flummox as a defender with the pass fake game. Jingles loves his head fakes, and he pulls them out a lot with favors. We'll freeze it here. This is a subtle thing. He just has a slight glance to Royce O'Neal at the top of the key, but that's enough to keep the help defender in his position, and you see what happens. It's the same theme here, and again, it's subtle. Joe's eyes here are on the corner, Royce O'Neal. His goal here is actually to get the man down low, helping on favors, to stray from this position, meaning he won't be close enough. He looks him off briefly, and then fires the pass down to Fave for the dunk. Favors. A nasty move down low as he hammered that over Holmes. Then there's the pick and roll snake, which as you just saw, involves the ball handler accepting the pick, then crossing back over to his original side against the grain. Longtime followers know I don't love the snake. 
only a handful of guys in the league actually do it well, and the rest use it as an excuse to jack up crappy mid-range jumpers. Ingles, though, isn't usually looking for his shot in these spots. Rather, he's looking to create space for favors. They got a lot of good quality pieces. Another beautiful pass, Ingles to Favors. You can't ask for much more than that. Favors comes out to screen for Joe. Ingles on a drive, there's that high floater. Oh, put it home, big fella. The Ingles-Favors connection was prolific the first time around. Joe threw 109 assists to Fave in the 18-19 season, the most of any duo on the Jazz and some of the most of any duo in the entire league. The two also formed a potent pick and roll connection. That 1.05 points per chance may not seem super high, but remember, you have to add in potential offensive rebounds, which adds anywhere from 0.12 to 0.15. Suddenly, you're looking at a very efficient offensive play type. Hell, these dudes play volleyball on the court with each other and still manage to score points. Makes for the Jazz this half. Eagles rolls inside, favors. Oh, how about it? Joe Pat, I think Joe passed to himself, got the assist. Pat. Finally, the Favors signing means a return to the Twin Towers look of Favors and Gobert, at least if Quinn Snyder wants it. There's been some debate about whether this unit can still quote-unquote survive in the modern NBA. I think that's misplaced, and I'll get to some of the numbers for why in just a moment. But first, a little bit of video for how Quinn Snyder uses these kinds of lineups to remind us all that he is a ridiculously talented offensive coach. Quinn knows space is hard to come by, so he runs simultaneous actions. Here, Favor screens for Donovan Mitchell at the top of the key while Joe Ingles and Rudy Gobert are running action on the other side of the court. This is going to occupy Favors' man who's worried about what Mitchell might do coming off the curl. Meanwhile, the actions finish simultaneously, Favor slips through and gets himself a layup and one. On a Friday night, as they go right to work with Ingles, Favors inside put it down and he was fouled. Here's another example, this time with Favors outside the three-point line above the break. Normally this isn't a great place for him to stand since he can't shoot from there, and this allows his defender to sag off and clog up the lane. But look at the wrinkle Quinn puts on it here, as he has Favors cut in at just the perfect time. Wait for it here. This little cut occupies the corner defender who would have been guarding Donovan Mitchell. Now Mitchell's wide open for the corner three that he's about to take. Here's Mitchell for three. It's good. And Donovan Mitchell with a great start. He's got as many points as Oklahoma City. Now to those numbers, which strongly suggest that the pair are just fine in the modern NBA. Favors and Gobert were plus 244 in nearly 2,000 minutes across their last two seasons together, including plenty of playoff success. They were a little more successful without Ricky Rubio, at least offensively. For everything that Rubio brings, he clogs the floor a bit more. As we know, Rubio's no longer with the team and the Jazz are playing lineups that have much more shooting than when he was on the floor. All told, it's no surprise Favors was the top name on Utah's free agency board this offseason. He fills their biggest needs from last season. He might help reinvigorate Joe Ingles, one of their key pieces. And of course, he's beloved not only in the locker room, but also by all of Jazz Nation. Look, we can quibble with how much the Jazz paid for him, but for me, this is a ceiling move. The Jazz are trying to win championships. They're trying to show Donovan Mitchell that they're a contending team while they still have him under contract, something that everyone likes to remind them the clock has already begun ticking on. For me, signing favors is a move that not only ensures they're going to win a lot of games in the regular season, which I think they are if they stay healthy, but also that they have a lineup to potentially throw out against the huge Lakers should they meet in a playoff series. I think the Jazz are swinging high here, and I think this should be what the fan base wants to see right now. Thanks again to everyone for your support. Subscribe and follow along here.